Hi everyone, this is Irwin and welcome back to my channel, Teacher Max. For today's vlog, I am going to show you different things we could commonly see in a Japanese school. Take note that I got the approval of our Kocho Sensei or principal in videoing the different areas of the school. So I am very much excited to show you these things which may or may not be present in the schools that we have there in the Philippines. So, wag na nating patagalin pa. Here is my top 10 list of the things we could commonly see in all Japanese schools. To keep the suspense, all the video clips will be shown at the end of this vlog. Let's have a good discussion first of these things. Okay? So, number one, school building. If there is one thing that I could say about the school buildings here in Japan, is that they all look the same. <laughs> Okay, most of the schools here have at least three buildings. One is where you would actually find the classrooms. Two is where you would usually find rooms that they use for activities and clubs. And third is actually the gymnasium. Kaya hindi ka na maliligaw pa. <laughs> Madaling malaman kung ang iyong nasa harapan ay isa ng paaralan. <laughs> Number two, bike parking. Oh, oh, nagbabike ang mga bata dito. There are actually different ways on how students go to and from the school. Siyempre, nandiyan na yung maglalakad sila or they would have their parents bring them to the school using their own private vehicles. Siyempre, nandiyan din ang school bus. But pinaka-common talaga is seeing students ride their bikes going to the school. Complete yan with the basket in front of the bike, di ba? For them to put their things. Then, syempre, may light para pag sila. And of course, complete with, the, with their safety gear, which is the helmet. How I wish that our roads in the Philippines are safe enough, di ba? To give this kind of opportunity to our students, di ba? Na mag-bike na lang papunta sa school. At least, nagiging contributory pa tayo sa well-being ng environment. Okay? Pero... Here in Japan, I was given schools na medyo malayo ng konte kaya I had to get a car instead of a bike. At medyo mahal din ang mga bike dito. <laughs> and I think very hindi rin pala no common na makakita ng bike parking dyan sa Pilipinas. Number three, shoe locker or shoe box. You may have seen in the past vlog that I usually have an outdoor shoes and then change from outdoor to indoor shoes. Meron ding ganito para sa mga students, okay? Kasi very particular ang mga Japanese sa cleanliness. So, it is important na at least, no, hindi dahil putik ka na yung sapatos mo, eh yun din ang gagamitin mo. <laughs> diba pag nasa loob ka na ng school, ba? So, hanggang doon na lang siya sa shoebox. Now, one thing that I notice also is that if in the Philippines, we determine the grade level of the student, minsan, di ba, by the color of the ID lace or by the patch, here, pare-pareho lang mga sapatos yung mga bata at nagkakaiba lang ng kulay dun sa lining ng sapatos. Ang social. <laughs> Gusto ko nga magkaroon ng sapatos nila, di ba? Pero, that is one thing that uh, I see very common here in Japan. Okay? Number four, the field and the gymnasium. Here, you would see the field, di ba? Malaki siyang field ng sand, di ba? Is where they would usually uh, uh, hold their sports festival. Then, any activity na involve talaga yung school community. And one thing that I've noticed is that yung mga bata dito, ang hilig tumakbo. <laughs> Sa umaga, tatakbo. Bago umuwi, tatakbo pa din, okay? And I have experience running with the students around the field, di ba? Malaking contribution siya sa 10,000 steps goal ko every day. <laughs> and then, of course, in the gymnasium is where you would usually see them play sports like basketball, volleyball, and any other sports for that matter. But one thing na pinaka na surprise din ako would be some gymnastics equipment. Parang bihira yata tayo makakita ng 
gymnastic equipment sa mga schools, de ba? Back in the Philippines. Pero dito, di ba? Very, ano rin sila, very engaged sila pagdating sa gymnastics. Kaya nakaka-amaze makita silang patambling-tambling. <laughs> okay. Number five is the classroom. Okay. Anong pagkakaiba ng classroom dito sa Japan sa classroom na meron tayo sa Pilipinas? Actually, yung mga classroom dito, medyo traditional pa. Diba? Kasi hindi lahat ng classroom dito merong audiovisual um, equipment. Okay? Unlike in the Philippines, most most uh, classrooms would already have an LCD projector. Okay? But here, in Japan, what you would see inside the classroom, in one of the classrooms rather, is a smart board okay? or the screen beam. Diba? Social din. Diba? May pag-touch screen, touch screen tayo dyan. Okay, so I just learned from the coach sensei when I showed him the clips of this of the videos na by December most classrooms uh, in the schools here in Kyotango would already have a smart board. Yes. Okay. Now, you would see also in the in the video later is that merong mga hooks no ng mga para sa mga bags doon sinasabit ng mga bata yung bags nila then at the same time makikita nyo merong basahan doon sa mga upuan kasi unlike in the Philippines kung meron tayong mga kuya at ate na mga janitor here yung mga bata yung naglilinis ng 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 classroom di ba at kakaiba di ba kung usually tayo yung basahan gagamitin natin yung paa natin para ipangpunas sa sahig sila gamit nila yung kamay nila di ba tapos igaganyan nila yung sa sahig no which is hindi natin kaya dahil malaki tayo at mahirap yun para sa atin <laughs> kaya ayun so just like what I told you, since very particular sila sa cleaning, hindi lang yung classroom, ha? even the hallways, they clean it, okay, in that manner. Then, you also, you may have seen in one of my Instagram posts na, di ba, yung mga tables dito, mayroong tennis balls. Para naman nga, di ba, pag ginalaw or inurong-urong yung mga upuan na table, eh, hindi rin naman ganun kaingay, okay? And then, one more thing, nakakaiba talaga dito na na-amaze ako, is yung electronic eraser chalk dust remover. Wow! <laughs> diba sa Pilipinas, pagka, diba the before, I know now, diba, whiteboard na yung gamit natin, but before, diba, ang gamit natin is yung blackboard pa, yung chalk pa, diba? Yung eraser natin, anong ginagawa natin? Pinapagpag natin sa labas ng bintana. <laughs> Or kung meron tayong dust box, diba? Doon natin ipapagpag, okay, yung ating eraser. Pero pagdating ko dito, I was so surprised to see, diba? Meron itong electronic machine. Then you just have to push and pull, okay, yung eraser doon sa electronic machine. Para ka lang nag ng halo-halo, diba? Then, automatic matatanggal na yung chalk dust, diba? Hindi na kumakalat yung powder ng chalk at mauubo-ubo ka pa. <laughs> okay, next, number six is the moving blackboard. Grabe. ba? Una talaga ako na amazed yung makita ko to. ba? Kasi, yung blackboard, pwede mong iangat, pwede mong ibaba. So, kung medyo isa kang teacher na katulad ko na hindi naman ganun katangkaran, pwede mong ibaba yung blackboard para at least, ba? we could reach the tip of the blackboard. At kung matangkad ka namang teacher, ba? pwede mong iangat, okay? Yung blackboard para naman hindi ka na sobrang yuyo ko. <laughs> para makapagsulat sa pinakababa ng blackboard. So, amazed na amazed talaga ako nung makita ko yun. Ang sarap laruin ng blackboard, pababa at pataas. Parang spaghetti. <laughs> okay. Next, number eight. Ayan. Is the timer. Okay? Siyempre sa Pilipinas, meron din naman tayong timer and most of the schools I've been to, ginagamit na nga lang natin yung LCD, di ba? Through the laptop, pinapakita natin yung timer. Pero dito talaga, meron silang mini timer, okay, na may magnet na nakakabit sa blackboard. At ang nakakatawa doon, minsan sabay-sabay magtutunugan ng timer. <laughs> Alam mo kung nagpapa-activity ang mga teachers, okay? So, very common yan dito sa Japan. Kaya huwag ka nang magulat na pagdaan mo sa hallway, puro timer, tulog ng timer ang madidinig mo. <laughs> Next, number 8, magnet. Okay. Ito, isa pa to sa parang kinagulat ko. Okay. Hindi ko maalala kasi kung gumagamit ba tayo nito noon. Pero sa experience ko bilang sudyante at teacher, never akong gumamit ng magnet sa blackboard. Kasi di ba pagka meron tayong kinakabit na manila paper or cartolina or kung ano paman sa blackboard, usually masking tape. Di ba? So, nag-uubos tayo ng tape kakakabit sa board. <laughs> Okay, but here, 
they are using magnets, di ba? Ang cute and ang cool, di ba? Na parang, wow, parang eco-friendly din siya kasi hindi ka nagsasayang ng tape. Par- parang I realized, in the long run, mas tipid pa rin siya. Diba? So, very common na makakita ka ng mga teachers na merong isang mini pouch kung saan ang laman ay puro magnets. Kasi nga, hindi rin naman lahat ng rooms dito ay meron LCD projector. So, we still make use of visual aids. Diba? Minsan talaga, mas maganda rin yun. Diba? Nagsa- minsan, ang sakit na sa mata ng PowerPoint lang, nakikita mo buong araw. <laughs> okay. Next, number nine school lunch. You may have also seen in the past post that I have had in Instagram, yung school lunch, diba? It's a, it's a complete meal. May soup, may rice, may vayan, then may milk, diba? Dito talaga natuto ako uminom ng milk. Yan. Ang kagandahan dito is that mayroong push cart na from the hallway, from one area of the school, hihilahin, ipupush yun ang mga bata papunta sa, sa kanilang uh, classroom, tapos nandun yung lahat ng food. Tapos mayroong mga students whose roles are servers, di ba? So, nakapila yung mga estudyante, tapos sila yung magsiserve ng food. Di ba? Ang saya. Parang nasa cafeteria, mini cafeteria ka inside a classroom. Okay? Ang ganda nung pagiging responsible nila dito. And then, at the same time, they pass around a certain paper kung saan nandun naka-explain kung ano yung menu of the day at bakit yun yung menu. Then, at the same time, nandun kung ilang calories, okay, yung kinain mo nung araw na yun. <laughs> so, very helpful siya, di ba? Now, one thing na maganda ding i-share sa inyo guys is that before they start eating, they usually say, Itadakimas, okay, or I humbly receive. And then after eating, they would say, uh, Gochus si sama deshta. Tama nga ba yun? <laughs> yeah, Gochus, Gochiso sama deshta. Ayan. Or thank you for the food. Kasi naman, they give like respect to the people involved in the preparation of the meal. Diba? Ang ganda ng meaning. But of course, syempre tayo naman sa Pilipinas, Pilipinas, being Catholics, diba? we usually just do the sign of the cross and give thanks for the food and for the blessings that we have received. Okay. And number 10, washing area. Yes! <laughs> Nagulat din ako. Merong washing area sa labas ng classroom. Kaya nga nang sabi ko sa inyo kanina, sila ang naglilinis. So, merong washing area kung saan doon na nila hinuhugasan ng kanilang mga basahan. Doon sila naguhugas ng kamay bago at matapos kumain. Doon na rin sila ng toothbrush. So, very common na makita mo ang mga students na toothbrush after uh, after eating. Pati mga teachers. Hindi katulad sa atin sa Philippines, medyo ang practice kasi natin, eh, sa bahay na tayo sa umaga magtoothbrush, ang second toothbrush natin ay sa gabi pag uwi. <laughs> But of course, diba? Siyempre, meron mga ilan sa atin naman na talagang toothbrush is la- toothbrushing is life. <laughs> okay, so these are the top 10 common things you would usually find in a Japanese school. So, meron nga ba dito sa Pilipinas? Yes, I think meron naman, ba? Pero siguro mostly na-amaze ako pagdating ko dito kasi nga I have never experienced encountering such things when I was still teaching um, in the Philippines. So now, I won't keep you waiting. Let me now give you a quick tour of my school and let me show you the clips of these things that you would commonly see in a Japanese school. Here you go. So, did you enjoy the short tour of my school? <laughs> so, those were the things that you could commonly find in a Japanese school. Now, some bonus trivia, no? 
about uh, schools here in Japan. One, the way of checking. Diba? As teachers, tayo, pag nag-check tayo, pag tama ang sagot, we give a check mark. Pag mali, we encircle the answer, right? Here, pag tama ang sagot, we encircle it. And then, pag mali, we check it. Diba? It's the opposite. Okay? So, medyo kakaiba ng konti. Kaya medyo nalito ako nung una. Okay? When I was given the task to check some papers. Another bonus trivia, a second one, would be Janken. Or, in the Philippines, bato-bato, pick or Janken. Jack and Poi, right? Here in Japan, most of the decisions are decided by Janken. No? So, they would they would use the Saisho Go, Jack and Pon. Diba? So, bato, gunting, papel. Diba? So, for example, uh, kakain ako ng school lunch sa isang classroom. Diba? Yung mga bata, mag, uh, yung mga bata nakakatawa naman sila. Yung elementary students ko, very excited to eat with me. So, gusto nila, sa, sa kanila ako tatabi. So, para mapag-decide kung kanino ako tatabi, magja-jack and pawn sila. Diba? So, junk and pala. <laughs> So, magja-junkin sila to decide, no? So, may mga, yung mga bagay-bagay sa school na kailangan ng desisyon, okay? Junkin lang ang kasagutan. di ba Ang saya. <laughs> and one last thing would be the alarm, okay? di ba Every after class, nag alarm And it reminds me of the anime na mga pinapanood natin dyan sa Pilipinas, di ba Usually, pag nasa school setting yung anime, yung tunog ng school bell, okay? School alarm, di ba Iisa. Yun din. Okay, ang tunog dito. Kaya naman, pag naririnig ko yun, feeling ko nanonood ako ng slam dunk. No? Kasama ko sila sa Kuragi. <laughs> so, ayun guys. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. If you have not subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And of course, to like and share. So, maraming maraming salamat muli sa panonood ng aking vlog. Sana kayo ay tunay na nag enjoy At kung meron kayong mga suggestions on topics na gusto nyong i-cover ko sa aking mga next vlogs, please feel free to message me. So, as I always say, enjoy life and live life to the max. Bye!